Hi. In this video, we want to talk about the law of Paschen. Paschen, Friedrich Paschen, or in English, Friedrich Paschen, uh, was a professor um, about 130 years ago. He worked in Germany and he made a very interesting experiment. He tried to find out the breakdown voltage between two electrodes based on the distance and the pressure. So, what did Paschen do? Paschen took two electrodes, they were round, and um, was able to change the distance and they were in an enclosure, so he was able to regulate the pressure as well. Um, we could talk hours about that and one of the things would be that um, it is important that there is no photoionization inside, that the only source of electrons would be the electrodes, but we don't want to go too deep into that. So we just know two electrodes and um, enclosed into a vessel where the pressure can be changed. Right in the middle between these round electrodes, we are going to have a homogeneous field. Obviously, on the outside, there will be an inhomogeneous field. Right? And to be honest, I'm not clever enough to know where does the homogeneous field go into the inhomogeneous field. Um, I would need a software for that in order to, uh, to show that. Nevertheless, he was using the homogeneous field in order to create, uh, to, to determine the breakdown voltages. And here we have a curve, uh, we, have a, we have a diagram. This diagram is double logarithmic, meaning here we have pressure times distance, and here we have the breakdown voltage in volt. Pressure times distance here, uh, the units are tor and centimeters. Tor is a historic unit of pressure, and one tor is something around 133 pascal. So. We could also write down Pascal times centimeters, then uh, obviously the axis would change a little bit, but um, that could be possible. However, um, the old uh, publications from him are pressure times distance uh, in tor and centimeters. And now I'm going to try to draw the Paschen curve and the Paschen curve would be something like this. Which means for every gas, we are going to have something which is often referred to as the Paschen minimum. And the Paschen minimum for air is as low as 327 volts. Give or take a little bit. This is for air with an atmospheric pressure of 1. And if I can recall correctly, the distance between these two electrodes was only 7.5 micrometers. Very often we don't have 7.5 micrometers in our world, especially not between two electrodes, right? Nevertheless, this helps us a lot to understand that changing the distance or changing the pressure will change the breakdown voltage for sure, because this is what the diagram says, but it also changes the partial discharge inception voltage, meaning at what voltage level do we expect our first partial discharges. So, in high voltage devices, usually you will not have partial discharges this low. So, as a rule of thumb, most people will probably say you need 3 kV or 4 kV to have partial discharges to start to begin with. Um, very often you use a very thin wire or a very pointy needle tip in order to achieve that. Otherwise, um, it is very common that 10 kV, 15 kV, uh, 20 kV, depending on your, uh, on your, on your, on your device, um, partial discharges might start. So, if you see something below 3 kV in a high voltage setup, I would check again because um, it is not so often. Um, the lowest partial discharges I ever saw, uh, there was an experiment that was uh, for a company that was in aerospace, uh, aerospace design, and they had PCB boards, um, the small boards that we have in electronic devices. And there, the connectors or uh, the conductors are very, very, very thin. And, this, um, and it will create a service discharge on the surface of the PCB board. And I recall that we had partial discharges starting as low as three, uh, 860, 900 volts. This was the lowest I was ever able to see to have partial discharges. Otherwise, 3, 4 kV is usually common. Um, Are we using this anywhere? Well, we're going to use this in a couple of videos and there will be a video where we actually explain why more pressure makes a difference. Um, a very common application where pressure makes a lot of sense 
or this is being used, is GIS, gas insulated switch gears. So in gas insulated switch gears, you have one, two, or you have one or three phases inside, and then the whole thing is enclosed into a tube made out of metal, and the distances in between there are too small to operate it at atmospheric, uh, atmospheric uh, pressure. So many GIS have an elevated pressure, very often it's something around five, six, seven bar, uh, meaning that the partial discharge inception voltage and thus the breakdown voltage is increased tremendously. They're also working with some different kind of gases, but this might be a topic for another video. So with that, I will close here and um, thank you very much for your attention. And if you enjoyed the video, please leave me a like. Thank you very much.